Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas, and today's surfboard review is on the Monster Box 2020 by JS Surfboards. Now I've got two stock boards. They're both 5.8. I've got one in swallowtail coming in at 25.6 liters, and then I have a squash tail coming in at 25.8 liters. Now I'm 5'9 and 160 pounds, and both stock boards I have an EPS epoxy hi fi tech. This is going to be a great review. Sit back, get your favorite drink, and enjoy the show. So, for my first session, I jumped on the swallowtail. I put my favorite pivot fin in. It's the Peregrine Size Large by Naked Viking Surf. And I edited all the footage that you're gonna see the first clip of waves with this set of fins. Then we'll come in and switch and try something else. Check it out. Anyway, as I was saying, well, I nearly missed the train. My hair's a mess, I broke a sweat on the run I left my telephone at home, I swear I'm getting played And by the way, I'm still running late I guess it must be someone's lucky day Take it from a seat and laugh at my I guess it ain't gonna be my lucky day Today Somewhere along the line So after a couple sessions in pretty fun waves, we got two different swell directions running right now. We got a south and a northwest. So when I look at it on video, the board's getting in the lip quick with this pivot set, but there's a bit of wonk in the wave. Now, the texture looks clean, but it has steep sections and then it'll go flat. So I come off the bottom and I want to go straight up and sometimes I have to adjust and do a big wrap. And I'm kind of feeling like I'm getting good pivot, but I don't have the drive I'm looking for with these fins. Now, it could be the board or just the waves. I'm going to take these fins out, get a neutral set in, and try it again. Let's check it out. Along the lines I wrote someone's loading dice I advise that you bet it all on the other guys I think sometimes I don't think enough Not sure if that's lazy So after a couple sessions on this neutral set, this is a prototype, something I've been working on with Naked Viking. I am feeling a bit more drive through my turns and the board's feeling loose. I'll talk a little bit more about concept and theory on this particular prototype that I'm working on at a later date. I just wanted you guys to see and I wanted experience for myself this board with a little bit more drive by adding a little bit more rake to the template. These felt better, but I still feel like I'm looking for a bit more drive, so we're going to get the squash tail going and we're going to start with the H4 fins. Forget, forget again, forget again, my friends. Forget, forget again, forget again, my friends. Now, after a couple days shooting on the H4 fins, they're feeling pretty good. I'm able to come off the bottom, get square, nice vertical turns. They, they do have the squirt, so there's some good drive in them. 
but one of the things that I've been struggling with, and I don't know if it's the board fin combination or if it's just the waves. What it looks like on camera is the waves look super good and they're fun, don't get me wrong, but there is some west in this swell. So I'll have a steep section to come off the bottom and get vertical, then the wave goes flat. And I kind of feel like when it goes flat, I'm not getting a lot of speed or drive through those turns. So what I'm thinking is, let's put in the Chloe and Dinos, because I know that fin real well, and I really like that fin a lot. We're gonna do that combination now, and hopefully we'll be able to see the difference between the H4 and the Colohes, and see if we can get a better fin combination for this board. Forget, forget again, forget again, my friend. Forget, forget, forget forget again, my friend. Now, after a couple sessions on the large Kolohe and Dinos, this is feeling the best. If I'm comparing this to the H4 fins, I've got more drive-through turns and still good pivot. So, not thoroughly impressed with the H4 on this particular model, but we'll do more testing on other boards as we move forward. But for me, this felt good, and I remember riding the Monster Box original over three years ago. I really like this setup right here. So on our final day of testing, I felt like we needed to get down and do it in some beach breaks. I wanted a wave with a little bit of punch, steeper sections to really come off the bottom and hit, the, hit a turn hard. And I felt like I was pretty critical on the fins and fin selection. I do still feel like the Monster Box 2020 feels best with the fin with some rake. Because it has a medium exit rocker, it makes it nice and loose and gives me traction. But I feel like when you get a board with medium exit rocker, you wanna offset that by getting a fin with some rake in it. So when you put it on rail and you start to do this turn, it's creating drive. So this consistently happens to me. It doesn't have to be this particular model. Boards with a lot of um, medium exit rocker, I like a raked fin. And I feel like that's why a lot of the pros ride a raked fin in these high performance shortboards. Now, being critical on fins, I think it's time to be a little bit critical on the Monster Box 2020. For me, at the point breaks, when the wave got steep, it felt good. But when the wave went flat, I really felt like it didn't have that X factor in speed. That's why I wanted to come to the beach break. Now, for me on the beach break, as it got steep, I could come off the bottom and the board was feeling right at home. So, I hear JS talk about this particular board for one to five, one to six foot waves, I wouldn't put this in one to two feet at all. Now, three to six foot, as long as the three to three foot waves got some punch or push to it and it's got some power, I feel like you'll do good on this board. When the wave goes flat, you're gonna work for speed, which is pretty typical for a high performance shortboard. So overall, I feel like the Monster Box 2020 needs a wave with some power and if we're talking about the squash tail and the swallowtail, I didn't prefer one over the other. The swallowtail offers more hold. It's biting into the wave of the face and giving you traction. And I feel like the squash tail is getting up into the lip faster and offering a little bit more release. So I recommend this board for the upper end intermediate, all the way to pro level surfers will have a good time on this board. Like I said, get in a wave with some punch and some push and this board will perform well. Now. The other thing I wanted to mention was there's a little bit more foam up in the front foot here. So it's a pretty good paddler. I wouldn't say it's excellent, but the stability under the front foot's there. So I can push hard and really get the board to give me what I want. If I were to order this board custom, I'd probably order it a little bit shorter, like 5'7", 19, 2 and 5 16 so I kind of felt like it was a tad long in the three foot wave for a quick transition. Now the last comment I have about the Monster Box 2020 is this isn't a daily driver or one board quiver for me. It belongs in a quiver. So if you're looking for a groveler and you want like 
a lot of fun in small waves, one to two, go for the Black Baron twin fin. I feel like this is gonna be more of a high performer shortboard for a lot of the people in our community. Remember, it needs a wave with some push and you're gonna have to work for speed. It's not gonna be as demanding on us surfers where you gotta be at the top of your game to ride like the Monster 8 or even the Air 17X. So let's look at a few waves together. Nice little right, nice projection floater. You can see the board's carrying good speed if you give it a steep little wall to work with. Nice turn right there, good flow throughout that whole wave. Now this little left, nice turn right there. As the wave goes flat, you can see I'm starting to struggle to keep my speed up and flow. Wave just goes flat and the board kind of struggles in my opinion. Now getting to the beach break right here, Nice little first turn, good two turn combo, and the board's looking alive under my feet. Now this last little right right here, good first turn. You can see a little bit flatter wave face. The board's going so-so. It just needs that wave for that, this board to have that flair to it. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review on the Monster Box 2020 by JS Surfboards. Look, if you like the show, subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you like the content. And a special shout out thanks to JS for sending these two boards down for review. Until next time, we'll see you in the water. Bye-bye.